Hello there and welcome to episode 44 of Little Big Knits. This is a podcast about knitting primarily. My name is Selma. I'm coming to you from here in Ottawa, Canada, where I live with my family, our cat Yoda. And uh, happy holidays to you if you happen to be celebrating. Um, I am coming to you on a beautiful sunny day, but we probably had the dreariest of Christmas weathers ever possible. <laughs> It was just so gray. Uh, we actually had to have the lights on all day long because there was just no light. It was just grim and gray and rainy. And I know they got snow in other parts of Ontario as well as in the States, but we did not. We got buckets of rain instead. But um, Christmas has come and gone. Um, we're still in the Christmas season, of course, but um, the major celebrations are gone and we're now in the sort of the resting period of the holidays, which I have to say, I was very much looking forward to. And I was very much looking forward to podcasting today and sharing one of my main finished makes of the Advent season. So I'll be talking about that very, very soon. So I hope this podcast is finding you well. Um, it has been a little bit of a strange holiday season for those of us that would normally celebrate. Uh, it was much more quiet, but that didn't mean that it was any less stressful. Uh, <laughs> it was strange. I have to just say it was strange, but at least we're all sort of dealing with the strangeness together apart, so to speak. And, um, you know, we just made do with what we could and and we had a good time, but it was, it was, uh, it there was definitely parts of this that I had to get my head wrapped around the notion of not having uh, people over to our house, like my mother. So, but um, I've been visiting her and we have gone into full lockdown again as of yesterday um, for four weeks. Um, but I am still able to visit my mother, so I've been visiting her and bringing her little treats and, and presents, and I took her out for a drive yesterday, and that's been really nice. So yeah, so welcome. Um, it is almost the end of 2020. Hoorah! Have you ever waited for a year to end more than this one? Um, I'm not sure I have, although I always look forward to New Year, uh, new beginnings, new ideas and I'm pondering what the new year will look like. But as we get to the end of 2020, we will be getting to the end of our two knit-along crochet-alongs that we've had all year long. Well, mostly, I think the It's About Time Cal started a little bit after New Year's. I don't think it started right at the beginning. Um, and the Garment Galore Cal started uh, mid-January, I believe. So those two knit-alongs are coming to an end on January 31st. I'll be closing the threads either at midnight or very early when I wake up on the 1st of January. And uh, those two uh, knit-alongs have been so fun. We have over a thousand garments in the world. Uh, over a thousand posts in the garment galore cal of garments that have been made this year. So, and so imagine that's how many people actually posted. I know there are many people who haven't necessarily participated. So all the new garments in the world. And in the It's About Time, we also have close to, a I think about 800 or maybe close to 900 projects. I, I can't quite remember exactly. But uh, these are all things that, you know, we finally got to, whether it was yarn or patterns or half-finished languishing projects. So that's been really, really great. I have so been inspired by those two knit-alongs and thank you for participating. Sometime in early January, I will do a special little giveaway, prize giveaway uh, edition for those two knit-alongs. So look out for that. And on December 24th, we started a new knit along called the Color Play Cal. Once again, crochet is accepted, even though it's sort of called a knit along. And this is the idea that you do uh, color play knitting or crocheting. And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be garments. It could be socks, hats, mitts, uh, skirts, whatever you feel like. Um, but it should include some sort of color play. So this is anything beyond stripes, really. Uh, it might have, you know, a slip stitch uh, technique to it, mosaic, which is essentially a slip stitch 
stitch technique. Um, it could be stranded, uh, intarsia, double knitting, shadow knitting, um, anything that is beyond just plain stripes, essentially, that is including some sort of a technique in color play. And I launched this on December 24th. A few people joined me in casting on that day. I cast on a project that I'll show you in a little bit, but this will now be going on until July 1st. Although I have so many plans in my head for color play that I'm kind of thinking mm, I might end up extending that, but for now it's until July 1st. So feel free to join me on that. In this case, whips are not supposedly, well, not really welcome. Um, let's start things anew and get them going this year and play with color in 2021. Next episode, I also wanted to do a little bit of a recap of 2020 of uh, a few of my favorite things, perhaps, um, in terms of uh, things we did or events, uh, books that I read, the knits that I made. So that's something that I'll do next podcast. Um, and yeah, so let's get on with the knitting. Let's get on with the, you know, the proverbial elephant in the room, so to speak. Um, I believe I shared with you last episode that uh, my friend Kate of the Hawthorne Cottage Craft podcast, who uh, had sent me a an advent, uh, unbeknownst to me, a surprise came in the mail one day, a big box full of little 24 little packages. And in each package, there was a 10 gram mini skein, uh, a little bit of tea, a chocolate, and sometimes another little goodie as well. And I had so much fun with this advent. I could not get enough. I could start it all over today. So the idea was that she ended up keeping herself 10 gram minis. And if you've been watching her vlog, uh, through the Christmas, uh, through Advent, uh, you've seen that she was also knitting this cardigan, which is the Caramel Cardigan by uh, Isabel Kramer, also known as Lila Lou 72, I think. Um, she is a designer, a prolific designer who's made wonderful things. This is one of her earliest designs. It's actually a free pattern called the Caramel Cardigan. You can find this on Ravelry. And it is a very simple top down raglan construction with uh, a sort of a double lapel happening here. And it's meant to be a striped cardigan. It's meant to be knit in DK. And uh, it's not very size inclusive. I'm going to tell you right away. It's only got three sizes, um, but I ended up making the small medium. And normally I would probably be making more of a medium large because we, it's supposed to have a 22 stitch gauge and my gauge was more in the 1819 range because I double stranded fingering weight yarn the fingering minis with uh, a strand of lace weight mohair that I got from Acme Fibers um, which is an online shop from the east coast of Canada and they sell generally undyed yarns at a very reasonable price because they're meant for for dyers and so I just bought some undyed uh, mohair from her and uh, so the gauge was looser. I knit this on five millimeter needles um, as opposed to, I think, the four millimeters that were called for in the pattern. And, uh, and I just went along. And I would not say that this is one of Isabel Kramer's best written patterns. There's a bit of confusion about the start of the cardigan. Um, I, I did mine differently than I think the cardigan actually meant to say. Uh, in my, the way I read the instructions was that you did the ribbing and you started the raglan. Um, Kate read the instructions, I think, in line with what the picture actually shows, which is that you do the ribbing and then you do an extra 10 rows before of, of knitting before you start the raglan. I didn't do that um, and I wasn't going to rip back when I realized that I probably should be doing that. I just thought it's going to be just fine. This is going to be a house cardigan. So, uh, otherwise, basically just followed the formula for the raglan increases and but then did my own thing uh, on the sleeves. I think Kate and I both agreed we would do essentially what the um, ranunculus uh, pattern calls for where you essentially knit straight and then you do a bunch of decreases in the last row and do an I cord bind off. So that's what I did. 
So every day of December until the 24th, there was a stripe. And this worked beautifully for the body. But it became apparent that we probably weren't going to have enough minis for the sleeves. And I also started losing my patience. And unlike some people who find they might knit sleeves more slowly, I tend to zoom through knit sleeves. Um, I don't know why. There's something that I can knit very, very quickly. And I generally at that point want the project done. I have enjoyed the process, but I'm done with the process and I just want the garment. And I was so keen to wear this on the 25th. And I knew that if I stuck to the Advent minis that I would be adding minis afterwards to, to actually make up the rest of the sleeves. So I just started incorporating my own minis that I found from my own little stash. I think that my sleeves could have been made a tiny bit longer. They seemed long enough, but when I'm actually wearing this, it seems like the sleeves retract a bit. So I may end up um, I may end up doing undoing the I cord, adding an extra stripe, and then redoing the I cord just to make it a tiny bit longer. But let me show this to you. It is really just a fun little cardigan, easy peasy to wear. I've got it with the shawl pin that came in my advent calendar, but one could simply wear it. I've got it with a t-shirt right now you know, open like this um, and not worry about this too much. But I tend to like to wear it like this, especially when it's over my nightie because it keeps me toasty warm. So this is the Caramel Cardigan, the Advent Edition, so to speak. Super duper fun. That's all I can say. I just enjoyed every single stitch of this thing. And um it's unfortunate that I don't need more than one <laughs> because I would do this again next year. So if, if there's Advent uh, knitting next year, I'll have to see. Um, I thought I could probably create my own Advent, but if there is, then I'll have to find something else to do. There have been some nice Advent sweaters. Um, Drea Renee came out, uh, Andrea Maori came out with a new sweater just before Christmas, I think called Stripes. Um, and the idea is that I think you choose about eight different uh, partial skeins, probably even, and create a striped sweater. Um, so I thought that could be fun to do, just to, to pick some partial skeins from my own stash and, and make that sweater next Advent. We'll see. But this Advent, which is where we're at, was really, really, really fun. I just so enjoyed this. And uh, so I would knit on this and then try and finish the Christmas knitting that I had on the side as well. So there you go. The Caramel Carden by Isabel Kramer. Knit in all kinds of different minis. There were lay family yarn. There was some woolen vine here, which is like such a gorgeous green. Um, there was some hedgerow yarn, some sweet sparrow. Uh, just wonderful selection of yarns that I got to try and uh, it was just really really fun so that was my advent knitting and my really my main finished object from this time I do have a couple of other items that were finished during this time which I'll show you in a second I'm just gonna have a cup of tea or a sip of my tea I should say mm. This is actually a cup that my son gave me for Christmas last year. I just really love. And in it is some tea that I received from Finland. I'm so thrilled. I have to say thank you to my auntie. Um, you may recall, I bought this tea uh, in 2018 when I was in Finland. I got a pack of this tea, which is a sea buckthorn green tea. And I really liked it. And it was I was drinking it very slowly. Uh, because I didn't want it to end. And then it did have to end one day. And I wrote to my aunt and I said, would you be able to find some of this? So she actually sent me three packages of this. So I'm gonna be drinking sea buckthorn tea for quite some time and I'm drinking it more, more uh, regularly now. And she also sent me some Novita magazines, which I'll show you a little later and a little, another little something else. Um, but that is what I am drinking today. And it's really lovely. I just really like it. So two other finished knits. I finished Alejandro's socks in time for Christmas. And uh, these went into his uh, his pile of gifts for Christmas. 
And uh, so he will be wearing those soon. And now this means that Alejandro has, I think, four pairs of socks. And, um, and so he's got more socks in rotation, which is great. Those were knit out of uh, Novita Venla that um, my friend Johanna had sent me from Finland. And the other thing I finished was my Oslo hat, which I think I told you last time I was re-knitting. And it's finished. And I really, really like it. Although, I'm going to tell you, I think I have a love-hate relationship with this pattern. It's deceptively, well, it's very simple, but there's just this little flip that you do and I'm pretty sure I did it right this time, but I find that I have to fiddle with this to get it to stay the way I want it to stay. And I, I don't know, I find it a little irritating, but I'm really enjoying this hat. Um, I petite knits uh, patterns, I find, I don't know about her newer patterns, but her older patterns, I just don't find they're particularly well written. Um, but she's got such a great sense of style that they are nice to have. So I've made two, so I, perhaps I shouldn't generalize. I made the Anchors sweater and I made this one. Um, the Anchors sweater was not very size inclusive um, and also not extremely well written, I would say. Um, but so I think that I wouldn't use that as your first sweater uh, especially if you need a more size inclusive sweater because it will not it, it really like I had to make it bigger for me um, so yeah it's it not terribly well written and this one too it, even though this is a simple hat there were little details in it that um, were just not terribly clear so I kind of knit this hat three times I've knit this one twice as well as the first one that I made in green but I really do love uh, the final object and it's very warm because you've essentially got three layers of fingering weight and mohair yarn here and um, I made mine a little shorter in the body uh, the, the the original one is a little longer so there's a little bit of a lift off of the head um, but I made mine like this and I'm, I'm glad I re-knit it because I just love the color and I'm really enjoying it when we've had um, We've had some colder days, like yesterday was actually quite a cold day. This was the hat that I wore um, because it just has that extra bit of warmth around here. So I am very, very happy to have used up this yarn. Um, the, 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 the fingering weight that I used was Wales Street yarn. She's no longer dying, um, but uh, she had gifted this pink yarn to me which has Stellina in it I don't know if you'll see that but it was a pink yarn with just wonderful gold and darker gold flecks going through it really loved it and was saving it um, and it finally became an Oslo hat which is great and I double stranded this with some um, sadness garn mohair that I had left over from my dotted rays shawl um, and it all worked out really well so that's essentially what I finished in the Advent season. Since then, um, what have I been working on? Well, I continued to work on my friend's plain Westboro hat, but I haven't finished it yet. I don't know. I just, I, it got put aside and I kind of forgot it. I actually think I don't have enough yarn for it. Um, and I think that that's partly the problem. I don't have a lot of yarn left and I don't think that this is quite deep enough. So I, I will now finish this or at least get close to finishing it. Since we've gone into lockdown, I'm unlikely to be able to go to the shop and get another skein of this. So she may end up having to wait a little longer if it turns out that I don't have enough yarn. I may have like just, just enough. It's hard to say. I need to measure. Um, I need to measure it, and then I'll be able to figure it out. But uh, it's knitting up wonderfully. This is the Haiku yarn Kenzie, which is a combination of a variety of things. There's merino. Uh, I think there's some silk. There's like just a, a. I think there might be some alpaca. I can't remember, but it was quite a mix of yarns. Uh, actually, it's right here. The tag. 
It's, yeah, merino, nylon, angora, alpaca, and silk noils. And it's being housed in this bag that my friend Sue had made, I showed you last time. So this really should be finished by now, um, but it kind of got put aside. And, um, but I'm gonna try and finish that before New Year's, uh, if I have enough yarn. And if not, then it'll probably have to wait because we are gonna be in lockdown for probably four weeks. Um, and I don't think that the shop where I got it really has much of an online presence, but I may give them a call and see if they could do some sort of curbside pickup. We'll see. The other thing that uh, I've been working on is a pair of socks that I've got in this little cute bag. I don't even know where this bag came from. I got it on Etsy, but I do not remember the seller's name. Um, but she had very reasonably priced things. If I find it, I'll, I'll put it down here so that you can see it. But my friend Holly had given me for Christmas, amongst other goodies, a skein of this West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply in the colorway Robin. This was a Christmas present from Holly. And I was going to actually cast that on on Christmas Eve, but I could not wait. So, and I also needed uh, something when I was visiting my mom. I, I think I told you last time, I, I tend to see my mom a couple of nights a week. Uh, I take her out on the weekends for a drive, but then I go and visit her usually in the evenings uh, during the weekend, we watch TV and chat and I knit and I needed a simple project and something easy to carry over as I walk. I usually walk there. Um, and so I started these, uh, these socks in this Robin colorway from West Yorkshire Spinners. Uh, Holly gave me a bit of yarn for the toes, uh, which is a Lang yarn, I believe, for the toes, heels and cuffs. And I should have brought my blockers down, but I have just so enjoyed knitting these. I've loved seeing the stripes coming out. It's just so fun. I made these toe, toe up as I always do, but I usually cast on 64 stitches and I decided to do 60 stitches for a slightly snugger sock. I've sort of come to realize that the socks that I really like to wear in my boots my walking boots are the ones that are 60 stitches. So I think that from now on, when I'm making plain vanilla socks that don't have a pattern, I think I'm going to aim for 60 stitches with, I always use a 2.25 millimeter needle. I like the, I like the fabric with that. Um, and so there are 60 stitches. I started with the same 14 as I always do, but like with Alejandro's socks, I did a heel flap. Uh, which is not a usual thing. I usually do um, the basic gusset heel by Wendy D. Johnson, but this time I used her recipe for a, a heel flap. And I used it on Alejandro sock, I used it on this sock, and so now I'm starting to get used to making it. Um, it's not as fast as the basic gusset heel, but I think it has two great advantages. First of all, there's there, it's a thicker fabric, so if you are hard wearing in the heel on socks, this would be a good thing because you do a slip stitch, um, you do a slip stitch pattern on it. And so that gives a little bit of extra fabric to the heel, but it also works really well when you wanna do a contrast color. Um, much easier, you add the contrast color when you are doing the short row at the bottom here, and then and you keep it until you get to the top. And um, yeah, it really works out well. So I might do these more often. I actually really, really like it. So uh, it's slower, but it's got those benefits. So I finished the first sock. I've just started the second sock, um, which is here. I'm using my Chow Goose on the 2.25 millimeter needles. These are my favorite sock knitting needles. Um, and, uh, and there we are. And Holly had given me this lovely little progress keeper, which is by Unwrapped Yarn, I believe on Etsy. And uh, I just really like little reindeer. And I'm really, I'm keeping it here, not for progress, but to show me what the where the front is. So this is the front of the sock. And uh, so when I start doing the the gusset and the heel, the front of the sock is really clearly uh, marked. So that's the project that didn't get cast on on Christmas Eve, 
but I did cast something on on the Christmas Eve and that was for the launch of the Color Play Cal. And I cast on the Silver Forest by Jennifer Steingas, also known as Knit Love Wool. This is a pattern that I've had for over two years in my stash and the yarn I've had for over two years as well. I bought the yarn, I told you last time, in Finland when I was there at a shop in Helsinki called Menita. And I bought the Pirkalanka. Pirkalanka. What was this one called? I think they call it just the Ohut. So it's their fingering weight. Uh, Pirkalanka makes fingering weight as well as a, a worsted, worsted Aran weight kind of um, yarn and with a large selection of, of colors. This is a two-ply yarn and a, a non-superwash. So this was my main color. So I bought this in Finland in, in August 2018 when I was visiting uh, with my mother for a funeral. And I started this sweater on Christmas Eve after I had swatched and I actually did something a little different for my swatching this time because I really wanted to see what would happen. I started <laughs> by swatching back and forth and my gauge was 24 stitches I believe for four inches. But I was a little concerned because I found that a little loose and I thought, oh, well, how is it going to behave when I go in the round? And so I cast on a bunch of stitches and I started going in the round and I actually got 26 stitches. So I think I now have proof that I tend to knit a little bit more tightly when it's all knit stitches. My purl stitches are a little looser, so it creates a looser fabric overall. Um, and I, I washed this to see if it would bloom and the yarn did bloom a little bit. And um, so I decided which size I would knit uh, based on, on this swatch. The pattern calls for 27 stitches for four inches. I'm getting 26. Um, so I chose a size accordingly and I am doing it on 3.25 millimeter needles. The construction of this sweater is a little unusual and I thought about modifying it, but I decided to be daring and actually just follow the instructions. Um, because this sweater is actually cast on, it's a colorwork sweater with yoke colorwork, and then the rest of it is plain. You actually cast on at the maximum number of stitches that you have before dividing for the sleeves if you're going top down. And you knit up. And then you, with a provisional cast on, and then you undo the provisional cast on after you've finished the whole yoke in the neck, and you pick up for the body and you knit down. So you end up with stitches going in two different directions. I think the reason that Jennifer Steingas did this was so that the stitch orientation of the color work was traditional and going up, right? Um, it reminds me of Arnen Carlos, who said that color work should you should always be knitting up because the the V of the stitches will be going this way, whereas when you're going, if you're knitting top down, the V of the stitches will be this way. And although I don't have a problem with that, the, the V's going down, and I prefer generally to do it bottom or top down, um, I sort of felt like with this pattern, it might actually have a bit of an impact on the look of the color work. So I decided to follow her rules, and just follow the instructions. And what you do is you cast on, in my case, 400 and something stitches on fingering weight yarn on 3.25 millimeter needles at a 26, 27 stitch gauge. That's a lot of stitches. You cast on as if you're casting on, you make sure you haven't twisted this, which is not easy when you've got that many on there. You knit a few rows and then you start with the actual sweater. When then once I need to go down, I'll be cutting the yarn here, picking up the, taking this off, picking up the stitches and going down. I honestly thought this yoke is gonna take me a month. I thought this is going to take me forever. Um, so many stitches, 
such a tight gauge, but somehow, literally yesterday, I knit the first part of, of the color work. And I'm on a row where there's actually three colors. You just can't really see much of a difference between here, between the white and the gray. Um, so I actually think this is going to go much faster. I'm really, really enjoying the color work. You may recall if you've been around for a few episodes that I really didn't enjoy knitting the rug. I did not enjoy the color work on the rug. And I think one of the main reasons was that it was rather thick yarn with small needles and long floats and I just really didn't enjoy that. This I'm really enjoying, the floats are short. I do have a, a ton, <laughs> a ton of stitches on the needles but it just seems to be working out fine and the other thing that I'm really really enjoying is that I am using my color work ring. I got this about three years ago and I didn't use it on the rug because the holes are not that big and I was concerned about the yarn getting stuck and having to deal, having to manage that. So I didn't use it. But I'm using it on this project and it's really helping me to keep the floats regular, to keep the yarn managed. Um, I'm just really enjoying this. This was a gift to myself about three years ago or so. Um, this is a handmade um, color work ring. I know you can find some that are more commercial. I've seen people use them. I don't know where they've gotten them from, but I'm sure if you look up a uh, knitting ring, you probably see all kinds of things. But this is handmade by a woman in Finland, uh, Sanni Lehtinen. Uh, I think her name is Kulta Seppa Sanni Lehtinen. She's in uh, in Finland, and I ordered it from her. So it was it was pricey. I'm going to be honest. It is a silver ring um, but I'm so glad that I have it. It's been really really great and has made the color work on this uh, sweater just such a joy to to knit and and has helped me because I tend to keep I prefer to keep the yarns all in one hand obviously if you're the kind of person who likes to do um, the colors coming from the two different hands then this probably is not something that you would need but I tend to like to keep the yarn going through like that and it keeps it all in order it's easy to decide which color is in front and which color is in the back for color dominance if that's something you're concerned about and it just keeps everything kind of simpler for me and considering that there are 400 and something stitches on here and the yarn is fine and it's it's a sticky yarn because it's a non superwash, you know it could become quite a messy experience so it's going really well so the yoke may not take me as long as I thought it would, and I may just finish it rather quickly. The color inspiration for my colors came from uh, a sweater on the pattern page in Ravelry. Um, there's Jennifer Steingass's version, but I think it's Camille Lavad's version. So Camille Lavad, the uh, yarn producer and designer. Um, and the colors are more muted than mine, but I really liked the idea of what she had done. And so that is what I'm following. If you go and see, so you'll see that I did white here with the green. Normally, it would have been reversed, actually. But I did it this way, and then I'm going to have light gray in the flower section with this olive green. So the little squiggly parts are white with the teal from the main part and then the flower part will be green with gray and then the squigglies at the top will be white again so that the internal portion is not all white um, and it'll be a sort of a softer contrast with that. So um, it took me a long time to choose these colors in the Menita shop in Helsinki and the person who was working there kindly helped me to <laughs> make some decisions and uh, it was great fun to do and uh, so yeah I'm really happy to be making this sweater finally. This bag and project is being housed in this bag by Dolphina uh, who makes great bags and uh, it's called and she's Dolphina13 on Instagram. It's just cats and knitting. 
So that is what I have in terms of works in progress. So I'm really intrigued to see how well that goes. Um, the socks I'm sure will be finished because I knit quite a bit every time I'm visiting my mum. Um, one thing I didn't knit on at all this time uh, was the silver, no, what's this called? The Stay Soft Shawl. I haven't touched the Stay so Soft Shawl in the entire month of December. This is where it was the last time I podcasted and it's still there. Um, but I'm hoping that once I finish the socks, um, that I'll, I'll pick this up and finish that off because I really want to have it. Something else that I plan on knitting uh, soon is, well, not plan on knitting, but plan on finishing, is uh, this project, which is in this bag. This is a bag by Ink Bag. She's no longer making bags. But this is a project that I started, I'm going to say almost two years now. Two years ago. And uh, it's a design by Kate Davies. It's a 100% mohair. There's no double stranding. It's just a single strand of mohair. And it's a design called Myrtle. And I'm not quite sure why I stopped knitting it. Because I finished... I finished the body. I have sewn the shoulders together. And I am now going to go into the sleeves. Um, yeah, I, I think partly what happened was that I wasn't sure how to start the sleeve somehow. It's not, it's not unclear, but something in my mind blocked about it. And I'm also not sure that I'm going to wear this sweater. Um, I think that this is a little too snug for what it should be. But I'm now determined to finish it and I'll be giving it to a friend, I believe. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to be finishing this hopefully in the month of January. And uh, I think it's going to look much better on my friend who is a smaller person than me. Um, yeah, I when I tried it on, I realized mm, not so much for me. It probably should have been uh, a larger size for me. Um, it's a little too snug for what it should be and what I had in my mind. So, but it is really, really pretty. And I have been using, to knit this, I have been using the Drops Kid Silk, which is a very reasonable price mohair. Um, that my local yarn store Wabi Sabi carries most of the time. And uh, I really like it. It's a good price point. They've got, um, you know, a lot of different colors generally. They bring in different colors. And um, I, you know, I've got essentially these three colors being used for it. So, yeah, so I am really expecting to finish that in the next month because the sleeves are should really take no time at all and um, I had thought about making short sleeves for it but I think I'll probably make uh, I think I'll probably make long sleeves I haven't quite decided but anyway but I am planning on finishing that I want that to be I want that to be finished um, and uh, and being used because it's a lovely lovely little very delicate uh, sweater very pretty so yeah so that's what I'm hoping to get done uh, between now and perhaps the next podcast I've got this big bag here now in front of me um, another thing that I'm hoping to do this year in the coming year is to join Kate of the Hawthorne Cottage Craft in her lucky, lucky dip cow Kate has decided to host well, two cows. She's got one based on books, knitting from books, and another one based on uh, randomly choosing a skein every month to knit. And the idea was to get through some of the wonderful sock yarns that she has. And I thought, what a great idea. So I have been collecting um, some of the yarns that I have, as well as uh, some of the newer yarns. Um, December was a big yarn... Um, 
Yarn Acquisition Month for Selma. Uh, there were some gifts, but then there were also purchases for myself as Christmas presents. Um, so some of them are in here and will be part of the Lucky Dip. She, Kate has put each skein into a brown bag and stapled it closed and will pick one each month, not knowing which one's which. I think I'm going to leave them in baggies, uh, like Ziploc baggies that are reusable in a bag. I'm actually thinking about using this, this Christmas pouch and probably just having a family member go in and grab one for me. I don't know that I'll be joining Kate every single month. I thought what I would do is I would pick when I'm in the mood for uh, like a sock type of thing. But it doesn't necessarily have to be socks that you're knitting. It should just be single skeins that you want knit. So a couple of things that I want to get through are, for example, this yarn. This is a Studio Donegal yarn that I got in Ireland last year. I got a couple of skeins. This one that's kind of a deeper plum and another one that's more of a brighter purple. And I actually thought about making Alejandro a tie with this. I have wanted to knit a tie for a long time. So this is going to go in there. This month I bought myself uh, a skein of this yarn. I could not help myself. I could not help myself. This is um, Katya yarns from Spain and I seem to like Katya yarns. I knit a lot with them. Um, they've got such a, an interesting array. This is actually a super wash. I'm pretty sure it's a super wash. Super wash, 75% alpaca, 25% polyamid sock yarn. So I am expecting to knit this at some point this year. So that's going to go into the grab bag. Kate had brought this uh, mini skein set from uh, Fine Fish Yarns when she came to visit at one point. And I want to knit this up this year. So that's going to go in there as well. I had gotten myself the skein of Mondim Yarns at one point. It's color 205. And I've been wanting to make uh, socks out of Mondim for such a long time. So this is going to go in here. And I've got some leftover, oh dear, leftover <laughs> mess from my, uh, what were they called? It was the, uh, the yak yarn that I had used. I think it was the Regia uh, yak yarn. And I'm gonna use that for the contrasting toes, heels, and cuffs with this. So that will go into a baggie. I recently purchased two skeins of Sweet Georgia's Bulletproof Sock. It's actually gone through a rebranding. It was their mohair silk sock, and now it's being called the Bulletproof Sock. This is a sock yarn that has 50% superwash merino, 15% silk, 15% mohair, and 20% nylon, and it is meant for socks. And of course it's got mohair in it, and I've been wanting to make socks with mohair, but the yarn that I have is not really strong enough for socks. I could tell that it's just gonna fall apart, so I started the socks and I've stopped. So one of these is gonna go into the grab bag. I haven't quite decided which one, Probably the brown, but that's going to go into a bag for this month as well. Um, I received a lovely um, little present from my friend Jean, who is part of our Ullen Knitting Group, and that's going to go in here as well. Jean tested the Westboro hat for me and then sent me the second part of, or the leftovers of the skeins that she used. Um, and I, because the colors were just so beautiful. She used a woolly mammoth yarn. This is a woolly mammoth yarn in her natural sock, which is a, a BFL Cheviot mix um, in this sort of lilac color. And then the mohair is actually from Shauna Yarns. I'm not quite sure how you would say that. And it's a beautiful color called Heavy Sky. So I, I don't want that to languish. I want that to become something at this point. So that will also go into my grab bag. And there are other, other skeins in here as well that will go um, into the grab bag. But uh, that is something else that I'm planning this year. And so when I want to knit a pair of socks or something smaller, I'll just grab one of those and I'll knit whatever I pull out. 
that's a really great idea. So there you saw some of the yarns that have come into my life. So let me show you some of the other ones. So first, before I forget, my aunt, along with the tea, had sent me three Novita magazines, which I have really enjoyed going through. And this is actually the uh, winter Christmas edition. And there are just some really, really wonderful color work ideas here, like this dress. Anyway, <laughs> there are just wonderful ideas. There's a really, really nice color work sweater right there that's just got lovely color work on them, on it. Um, and so there are just so many wonderful patterns in these, and I'm going to continue, continue looking at them. Uh, my aunt sent these to me. Thank you. And the other little item that my aunt sent to me was a piece of bobbin lace that she did in the 90s and has put it into a keychain. And I just really, really, I hope you can see that. It's sort of hard with the reflection. You can see my mouth moving through it. <laughs> um, I just loved that so much. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to use this. I don't know that I'll use it for keys, but I'm thinking about putting it on a bag. I just really love it. It's really precious. So um, that was something else that came to me in the month of December. As part of the advent calendar for Kate, and one thing she had sent me that I hadn't shown before, and that came before, this I opened before the advent calendar, was this lovely skein of yarn from Fine Fish Yarns. This does not have a colorway, um, and I'm not even 100% sure which yarn it is. I think it might be BFL, but I'm not 100% sure. But that came in there. And then we gave each other uh, sort of a package on the 25th after Advent Knitting, and Kate sent me this wonderful quantity of this fabulous blue yarn, which is the Sport Weight Nua by Stolen Stitches or Carol Feller. And there are six skeins in here. I believe, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Um, and there is, it's a sport weight yarn that is a combination of merino, yak, and linen. And uh, it's just stunning. So it's got a very heathered look about it. And I've been trying to figure out what it is that I want to make with this. I actually thought possibly of making a non-mohair ranunculus out of this. Um, and if not a ranunculus, some sort of sort of like just nice little layering piece, I think. I think this would make a really nice vest like piece. And the yardage on it is at about 130 yards, I think. Um, right. So there are less than a thousand yards. So it might not be quite enough for a sweater, but it'd be perfect for a layering piece. And it's just such a stunning blue. So that was one thing that came to my life. Thank you, Kate. Santa brought me a bag that I've been looking at for a long time from Antler and Acorn. She's based out of the UK, Antler and Acorn on Etsy. And she makes bags out of Harris Tweed. And I have just been looking at this bag for so long. And so I asked Santa if I could have it. <laughs> And um, I think this was her Loch Ness um, pattern. I think that's what this, this, this fabric is, is called. I just love the colors in it. So I'm looking forward to, to using that. And in fact, these would go very nicely together. <laughs> um, then uh, my mom asked me what I wanted and I said, well, I wouldn't mind some yarn. So she let me uh, buy some yarn for myself and I ended up buying a whole bunch of yarn from the Georgian Bay Fibre Company. They're out of uh, Parry Sound, Ontario. And they have, uh, this is their BFL color, uh, BFL yarn. Um, they have two yarns, this BFL or they have a Canadian yarn. I cannot remember the variety of the sheet that is a little bit more rustic. 
you can just it's got a much more rustic feeling and the bfl has you know a, it's a little bit more a little smoother a little bit more refined um uh, i bought a skein of this in their rather dark colorway what was this colorway called um i think it was their slate colorway because i wanted to to see what it was like and i thought you know it could turn into a hat or mittens or something like that this i bought with the idea of and i've got a sweaters corner here of making the barocco sweater i can't remember the designer's name i'll put it down here um, it's a slip stitch color work sweater that i really really like but I don't think I'm going to end up using that for it because I had wanted the colors to be a little bit more intense. I thought this was going to be a deeper gray um, and it's a little bit too powdery for for what I want in that sweater. But this would make a beautiful combination for something else. Um, and there was also another scheme oops, of uh, another colorway called Feldspar. So this particular gray is called Vista. This is Aster, and this one is called Feldspar. And this ended up a little bit more orangey than I expected. Um, I was expecting it to have this sort of muted, um, sort of rose gold, and there's a bit more orange in there. But I think it's gonna be really nice for something. It just didn't end up going with this. Um, so this will become something else. I don't know what, um, and hopefully, um, the yarn for the Barocco will will make itself known to me at some point in, in the near future. I had thought about knitting that during the Color Play Cow, but I won't at this point. And then I think I might have gone a little crazy, but um, and I blame it on my friend Holly. Um, Holly suggested that I needed to have an olive green ranunculus, and I actually had been thinking about an olive green ranunculus. Um, but I don't have any olive green yarn. So I have bought this Emily and Philomène, which is a Quebec uh, yarn producer uh, in their Josephine base, which is essentially a 100% uh, non-treated mo uh, merino in this beautiful color. And then I bought some Isiger silk mohair to strand with it. I got these from Espace Tricot. Holly and I placed an order. And so at some point this year, there will be an olive green ranunculus. I'm really, really quite excited about this. Um, I love olive green. It's one of my favorite colors. And so I'm really uh, excited at the idea of having an olive green ranunculus. So, I think that's probably enough. That was a lot of yarn that came into my life in one month. A lot of yarn. <laughs> and that really is probably the end of the yarny content. Um, we have uh, come to the end of all the yarn. I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm totally surrounded here by yarn, things that have just gotten thrown to the floor uh, after I've spoken about them and I'll pick them up afterwards. Um, and what I'll do is at the end of the podcast, I'm going to leave you with images of different projects or different um, patterns that I have in my library of things that could work for the color play, knit along, crochet along in the event that you need some inspiration. And I'll leave that for you at the end of the podcast um, so that you can have uh, a look at that and see if there are any ideas there that inspire you. Um, in terms of uh, what has what else has been going on since the last time I podcast, well, all podcasts, obviously there's been a lot of Christmas prep, um, a lot of, of knitting uh, to get ready for that, but we did a lot of baking this time, probably more baking than usual. And I, and I think the fact that, um, you know, we're, I'm not commuting to and from work has left the evenings feeling a little bit more spacious and so there's been more time so I've done more baking than I think I've ever managed to do. We made a gingerbread house again this year. Um, we made uh, two batches of gingerbread cookies and spoon cookies as we always do and I made some Mexican chocolate 
butter cookies from the Cooks Illustrated, um, as well as some um, chocolate cookies with gin-soaked raisins from Maida Hatter. Like, I just went all, all out making some things that I haven't made for a long time, like the chocolate butter cookies, and the Maida Hatter cookies, which I've always wanted to make and never have. So uh, I'd say that we've definitely had our fill of sugar for this <laughs> for this December, and um, and so it's been it's been a busy busy month that way. Um, I also managed to read. Um, I think last time when I spoke, I was reading a Lisa Jewell book, and um, I finished that one. It was called Invisible Girl, and I liked it so much. Um, that I wanted to read another Lisa Jewell book. And so I read Family Upstairs, which happened to be coming, um, was ready for me to to sort of download from the library. So I listened to two Lisa Jewell books back to back, and they were just perfect. I just needed a light, um, engaging, plot-driven books, and that's exactly what they were, and that was perfect. I have now started listening to the Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd. Um, and I just literally started, like I think I'm maybe an hour in, and I think it's a 13-hour book uh, because I'm listening to it. Um, so I can't say too much about it, but everybody who has mentioned that book has said they've absolutely loved it. So I am really looking forward to listening to it. And uh, and it's, so far, it's really quite interesting. I also watched a show on CBC Gems called Normal People. It's actually a um, uh, a mini series, an Irish mini series, uh, based on a book called Normal People, and um, I could not stop watching it. Not Christmas fair; uh, it was kind of depressing and dark, um, but I really, really liked it anyway, and I couldn't stop watching it. And stayed up probably a little too late watching it most of the time. And uh, yeah, so that's essentially the media that has gone through. We don't watch a lot of Christmas movies, I have to say. Um, Charlie Brown Christmas is probably the one thing we have to watch every year. And Isla loves Charlie Brown and loves uh, the soundtrack that goes with it. So we listen to it a lot as well. And, um, and now that Christmas has come and gone, um, I'm finding myself looking more towards uh, 2021, starting to think a little bit about about my word for the year. Um, this year, I had the word nourish. Um, and I have to say, I don't think it was the best word for me. It didn't speak to me in the way that words have in the past. So uh, I'm taking that as a lesson in perhaps um, going a little deeper, thinking a little bit more about what it is that I need or I'm seeking um, in the coming year. So uh, more to come on that next time. So with that, I will leave you, hoping that this podcast finds you well. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, we will see you in 2021. I hope that uh, it will be a more positive year for the majority of the world. <laughs> I think we can say that we're all together in um, not having the best year of our lives. Uh, I mean, hopefully there are some people who really have had a great year despite all of this. And there certainly have been some great moments. There always have to be. And um, yeah, we'll see you in 2021. And I hope it'll be a good year for all of you. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.